God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Thank you for the privilege that you have given to us to be in your presence and to be exposed to the word of life. We do not take it for granted that you are speaking uh, expressly, you are speaking fatherly, you are speaking lovingly, and you are speaking caringly to our lives. Oh God, we don't take it for granted that our ears are hearing what you are bringing to us. Lord, we don't take it for granted that before some of our sisters who are spinsters will enter into things, you are giving them principles. We are very grateful. And we thank you even for those of us who had married without knowing these things before. You didn't allow it to only come when everything had been spoiled. We thank you, Lord, that what lies ahead of us is far, far better and greater than what lies behind. And our decision is not to mourn about the past. Is to move forward. Is to go from here now, acting on what you are saying to us. Lord, please help us. Thank you for hearing us. As we take this segment of the seminar again, on tips, we ask, Father, that you indeed give us tips. Tips that will become wisdom. That will give us the, 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 the victory that we have been praying for in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I need to be very focused on what I want to do, but I also know that there are several sisters here who will say, oh, but my husband already died. What do I need that tip for? Uh, I want you to know that those tips, they will become your own instruments in case God leads you for another marriage or in raising younger women. Elderly women, will you take these tips in retrospect I say, if I had known this, I wouldn't have gone this way. And it would be wonderful to call a young lady who is just about to marry or who has just married. And to say, these are the tips I omitted that made me to have all these scars you see on my face. Don't go this way. Take this and you will see miracles. So whatever it is, for spinsters, I would like you to take these tips and keep it in your cupboard, in your heart. Hallelujah. All men are the same. I told you yet, yet the other day. Even the one that is still in the, in the, in the credo, once he's a boy, he will grow up like this. So even if you are just dreaming of the man you are going to marry in 10 years time, it's alright. Take these tips and store it at the back of your heart. God will help you in the name of Jesus. Chapter 4 of Ruth. 
and we read from verse 11 and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said we are witnesses the Lord make the woman that is coming to thy house like Rachel and like Leah which two did build the house of Israel and do thou worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem and let your house be like the house of Phares whom Tamar bear unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife and he went, when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. Praise the Lord. I will stop there. You can read the rest on your own, uh, because we don't have space. That, I said, is the beginning of uh, another tip that I would like to share with you. Do you know that from time immemorial all communities and all peoples even those that we don't imagine to belong so much to the Lord Jesus Christ they believe that for a man to be famous and for him to do worthily among his people it will depend on the kind of wife he has eh? and you may not even know that every time elders are praying for a young man their prayer has not finished until they pray for the kind of woman that will come into his life because a man has no house until a right woman comes to build that house for him Please listen. So you see, when they began to pray for Boaz, what caught my attention was that all the elders, they gathered, they said, we are witnesses. And that the Lord made the woman that has come into your house like Rachel and like Leah which two did build the house of Israel and my mind quickly went so back and said eh, Rachel and Leah <laughs> were they friends were they building the house together but I was amazed that actually what they were doing as they were fighting as they were you, you can see the did you remember the jealousy in that house do you remember how many times Jacob had to eat two lunch two breakfast and two dinner because when he has eaten from Rachel there yeah, we say waiting then give you say so, okay bring your own too and how all those things were done. And yet, you wouldn't expect that they were building the house. And the first thing that touched me is this. Whatever kind of woman you are, you are building the house. I don't know whether you're hearing me. Whatever you are, whosoever you are, you are building. 
And what your husband will be remembered for is what you are building. When they gave this summary that Rachel and Leah, they were the two which built the house of Israel. Nobody discussed all the quarrels, all the troubles. The only thing they are talking about is the result of the house that had been built. But on one side they were saying, let Ruth, the woman that is coming to your house, let her be like Rachel and Leah, which two did build the house of Israel. All they are saying is that, let her come into a place where she will build you up. And, and you will do what delay in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. Now, my question was, was Boaz not a rich man before? Eh? What is the need for that kind of prayer? I wish you will know that properties, cars, big businesses is not what builds a man's honor. It's not what builds his house. The unfortunate thing that many, many uh, women and even men may not have appreciated in their hearts and in their lives is to recognize that business, industries, money, and all of those things, as great as they are, they don't constitute what builds a man's house. And what made him to do what delay? In Ephrata, the Bible is pointing that it will be the woman. Hallelujah. And I want that to first be at one corner of your heart. And when I'm going on, I will show you why it is a tip. They went and measured, I mean mentioned another man. Said, let your house be like the house of Ares. Whom Tamar bear unto Judah. Did you see the, the kind of person they are again referring to here? Why are they using these kind of stories? But what touched me is that wherever you pick the woman from and whosoever the woman is once she has become a wife she is the one that will either make or, or make your house and your life. So let me first say to you, sisters, and I say this in confidence, it's a confidential matter. You hear me? You need to know this deep in your heart. Even if your husband does not appreciate it. What as a woman you need to know is your value. The day you do not know your value, that's the day you will be looking for value. And several women, they are struggling to look for value because they have not understood what was their value. I want you to know that even if your husband has not openly confessed and acknowledged what I'm saying to you, the truth of the matter is that it is what you built for him that he will be remembered for. And it is important that deep in your heart 
you will carry yourself like that. Hallelujah. I'm not sure when Tama came into the house, into the life of Judah, whether they respected Tama. Do you think they respected her? Eh? Do you know that they took Tama as bad omen? You didn't know. He said, this woman, he married the first son, they get, the boy died. The second son, we gave her to marry. That one also died. Maybe she's a witch. And by the time Judah slept with her, not knowing that it was, <laughs> it was his daughter-in-law, and they told him, Tama is pregnant. He said, What? Bring her here to be killed. But she was a very wise woman, isn't it? She brought the token. He said, eh, Let me say something before I'm killed. They said, What do you have to say? Foolish woman. So she brought the token, the bracelet, and the staff, and what that man used to work with. He said, help me identify who owns these things. If you know who owns this thing, it is by that man that I'm now pregnant. And if I have to die, he has to die with me. <laughs> wow! Judas started saying, Oh, I'm guilty. I did wrong. Mm, okay. That's how Tama was brought into that house. But do you know that Tama was the one we are talking about now? That she built the house of Judah. It was interesting that her name was in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, what I'm saying is that it doesn't matter how you are even treated. It doesn't matter how they even looked at you. And some of you not understanding your value. You are busy struggling with people's impression. And that is hindering you from your own expression. I wish to inform you that the moment a woman is relaxed in her heart about who she is, she is going to do valiantly. But there is a problem that has occurred since man fell. It is that women continue to seek definition. She continued to look for what impression the man has about her. And she will spend almost all her life seeking that rather than being who she was made to be. Sisters, my first tip to you this moment is learn to be who God said you are. And begin to live in that reality from this moment. The end result is that men will finally acknowledge what God had made you in their lives by the grace of God. That tip is not yet clear, but it will be clear as I'm going on. I want you to stop struggling about acceptance. I would like to suggest to you be the woman that God is saying you are. You are the one who will make that man famous in Bethlehem. And you make him do worthily in Ephrata by the grace of God. Now, quickly moving from there. 
because I must be moving fast. Now go to Proverbs. And we are going to spend a lot of time this today from the book of Proverbs. I hope the Lord will be helping us. Now look at Proverbs 12 and verse 4. Proverbs 12 verse 4. Are you there? A virtuous woman is what? Is a crown to her husband. But she that makes ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Now, I am not going to be focusing on she that makes ashamed. Because I am not giving you tips that will make you ashamed. That's not it. So, let me pretend as if there is not one in this meeting that make it ashamed. I want to go ahead now and begin to talk to women that are virtuous. So we must take deliberate steps to bury and to cover our past shame as we deal with it in repentance. But we need to move deliberately forward so as to see what we are longing to see in Nigeria through women that God is raising uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So look at that verse 4 very closely. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. So as soon as that scripture says she is a crown to her husband, it quickly meant and it raises a very quick question in my mind that is leading us to look at what is it that God is pointing at here. You know, I know you have had a lot of studies on the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman. But I want to draw your attention to some little, little tips that is relevant to a husband. Hallelujah. There are certain things that a husband regards that affects him and opens his heart immediately. And you will just find that it's not as difficult as you thought it was. If we will understand what are the quiet issues that the Lord is raising here. Do you think I should press from there now? Now, when the Bible used the word, the virtuous woman, the immediate chapter that your mind will go to is Proverbs 31. And so let's go there. Now, when we get to Proverbs chapter 31, I don't want to be describing the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman. I want to be looking at what is the tip that the virtue of a woman what is the tip that a virtuous woman must aim at in getting across to her husband and God is so gracious that even in that chapter your favorite chapter you will discover that almost in every Bible verse there is a reference to the man. Is that alright? But I know as a woman, your own concern, I mean your own concern all the time, was uh, how to be virtuous, how to be virtuous. But I wanted to see what, what is it that is, that, that will tickle your husband. What is it that will get him completely overwhelmed and excited when he sees it in your life. Can we take it step by step? You know in that chapter 31. It was a chapter that started with a very big contradiction for me. You know he said. That this particular chapter that we are reading. It was a woman. 
that was speaking to his son. Oh, you have not seen it. <laughs> it was a mother that was instructing his son. It was it was an experienced woman who is giving the secret to his own son what to look for in a woman. And I thought that if you understand that experienced mothers they are very very concerned about the wife their son marries eh? now and that is my first tip for you tonight I mean this morning you will find that for many many marriages the greatest obstacle that many of you have gone through is your mother-in-law. Eh? Oh, you don't want to tell me. And the reason is not all negative. Oh. It is not because that woman does not love you. What makes that woman to look as if she's interfering with your marriage is the great expectation she has in her heart for her son. Hallelujah. And I would like to share with you that in order to enjoy your marriage, it is not your mother-in-law you must fight. Those people who prophesied to you and said, eh, you see, <laughs> there's a witch. There's a witch. We don't know the last time I was in a vision. I didn't see the face very well, but the woman is a little old. She's not too tall. She's in between short and tall, and she's fair complexioned. I don't know who she resembles. But that's the woman you've got to deal with if you are going to succeed in your marriage. You say, did you say she's not too tall? Did you also say that she is fair complexioned? Mm. Mm. God, you are good. I want to tell you, those prophets, those prophets, who signal your mother-in-law as the witch, they are going to obtain your pot of soup. You are going to be forever in trouble. As long as the first person you criticize in the ears of your husband is the mother that carried him in his womb, in her womb, for nine months, that backed him on, his, on her back for three years, that sucked him for five years. <laughs> Sisters, are you hearing me at all? Or you don't want to hear this tip? You see, there is a passionate connection between a man and his mother. When your husbands were here, when you were not there, I told them to do something. I told them that the room where their mother used to stay in their heart that's where they should bring you 
they should move their mother out of that tent and bring you inside. They are happy. They say, Sir, if that's the word of God, we will do it. But I want to warn you, sister, if you carry broom to sweep out your mother-in-law's leg from that room, your husband will violently change. Something will rise inside of him that you couldn't explain. It will change. It will become like a lion. It will suddenly begin to suck again. You will be looking for that breast again. And you will be surprised that whatever you are doing doesn't enter his heart anymore. It is because that is a very tender relationship that you need to know how to handle. If truly your mother-in-law is a witch, can I tell you what to do? Feed her. Love her. Pamper her. Eh? Make her a queen. Then a witchcraft will die. Don't join that prayer meeting where they are doing all night. And as your mother-in-law is entering, say, what for? Shara ba 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 shamba ba 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 toro boskila ba 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 koro boshinda ba koro boskuri abo koto ro boskila. Nobody will be able to break my home in the name of Jesus. Hey, you koro boshanda ba 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 ba. Eh, you are wasting your time. You have missed it completely. When your husband enters the room and she he discovers that it is his mother that was the object of that prayer, you are in trouble already. Your husband will say, eh? That's the day your prayer of agreement with him breaks. It is interesting to understand that the passion of a mother-in-law, even though some have taken it to an extreme, I would like to say to you that it is a genuine passion. And all of you here, as you are sitting here, you are going to become mother-in-laws. Then you will understand what I'm saying. Then you will understand that that is something that you have cherished for years. And a strange girl is going to take him away. You are born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Something in your heart is saying, ah, ah. And the way she's behaving, I don't see the virtue of a woman that could help my son in her. So I would like to quickly say to you, dear sisters. For her to move out of that tent where you should be placed, she must be carried on a gentle horse to a decorated place. <laughs> Are you hearing me at all? 
What am I giving you? Tips. Tips. When I was going to get married, having lived with my mother for years, I know how passionate she was. I know how 4 a.m. she will wake me up and she will kneel down and say, I'm begging you. Don't marry all these girls that I'm seeing coming if they are not from our town. I know how my mother will bring her breast and say this is the breast you suck. I beg you because of my breast. Oh, you don't know mothers. Maybe some of you don't understand mothers. That's why you are treating it like that. And when I said... I will do the will of God. He said, I'm not saying you should not do the will of God. That's not what I'm saying. Don't misunderstand me. But, don't bring a strange woman to the house. I am told that those women from that side, once you get married to them, they make you forget your people. Are you, are you understanding? And incidentally, the people that they used to say behaves like that happens to be where my wife is going to come from. Oh my God. So you can see now that I'm going to bring a wife into a place where there is prejudice. How will she be able to live in the midst of prejudice? So if they visit me and my wife, by just being a normal wife, says, Mama, sit down there. And me and her, we went in and we talk and uh, we are doing our own thing. Against that prejudice, do you know what mama will conclude? Uh, they told us. At the summer. Hallelujah. But I know that as genuine as our passion is, we still must move her from that tent and put her in another decorated place. So you know what I said to my wife? The first day she was going to visit my village, we have not yet married, I called her, I said, Shade, can I tell you something? And she was very obedient. I said, when you go home, I won't follow you. I want you to go on your own. Don't let it be me who brought you. Go and do what? Go and win my mother. Once you win her to your side, everything is finished. She said, how do I do that? I said, when you go home, they will they will be testing you to see whether you will confirm their fears. They will test whether you are a ga 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 girl. Who is coming and say, Do you know what am I giving you this afternoon? <laughs> Do you like those tips? Yeah. Hallelujah. 
You see, you won't know that what provokes mother-in-laws are things that you don't consider. The way you are moving, when uh, your husband is sitting, you go, yes, darling. Yes, 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 yes. You will see that his mother will say, mm. what are they saying that she doesn't want me to hear now? What are they saying? Before you know it, you are building, you know, trouble. And so the day they explode, you are saying, but what have I done? What did I do to this mama now? What did I do? What you did, you didn't know. You confirm something. So I said, when you get home, they will give you a special treatment. They will bring you a lordly dish. They will say, ah, educated guests, they don't drink water from our own cup. Let's go and look for a better cup. Don't drink from that cup. Oh. <laughs> Take the cup that mama has been drinking from and tell her that you will drink from what she drank. You know the matter. She is asking if I release my son to this woman, will she take me as her mother? Do you know no matter how dirty your mother is, you've never rejected your mother. But when a mother-in-law is dirty, he says, Mama, don't touch that thing. Don't put that thing here. Why did you do that here? You know the answer, the what is entering the heart of your mother-in-law was, I am rejected. Now I don't know how to do anything. Now I don't know how to put the cup. Now I don't know how to put the table. Now I don't know how to do anything. And before you know it, your marriage is already set on the keg of a gunpowder. So I say, when you get home, drink from the same cup. Ask Mama to give you a wrapper to change. Don't go with any other rapper. Collect mama's rapper. So that she can confirm that her body odor is not irritating you. Because that is the body odor that your husband came from. I know when you were growing up as a young girl, maybe nobody gave you these tips. And those things, as little as it is, it could draw a dagger from a husband that you thought you loved. His eyes just turn red. So it doesn't matter what my mother does. She's my mother. And you'll be wondering, what have I done? Little, little things. So when she went, she did more than I instructed. She drank from the cup. She took Mama's wrapper. She insisted that they would sleep on the same mat.
in the morning she quickly swept everywhere. Let me ask you. Are they asking you to come and sweep at home again? No. You see, it's only one thing you will do once and you will have got your husband. But when you refuse to do it, you will forever struggle for your husband. As soon as she did that, the whole house, the whole family was electrified. They couldn't wait until I came home. As soon as I was coming, Mama said, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said, What have I done? He said, You have brought for me a daughter. She wasn't a Christian at the time. She wasn't born again at the time. But everything became open. Whatever she had, she will call her and say, take anything you want. But what I say, and I say, for whom am I keeping it? It's for you. And what mama used to say, said the daughter that refused to come to her womb, God has finally brought her is that not Bible? Tips. They are not costly. They don't need all night prayers. They don't need all this fasting, 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 fasting. They are simple tips. That will open your keys and make a way for you. So you see, a grandmother, a mother is speaking to the son in verse 2. What, my son? What, the son of my womb? What, the son of my vows? Look at what a mother is saying. In one verse, my son, what, my son? What the son of my womb? What the son of my vows? What is that mother appealing to? What is the sentiment that that mother is calling for now? What my son? What the son of my womb? Oh, what the son of my vows? The sentiment of a mother. Thank God that you are all mothers here. And you know what I'm talking about. Give not your strength unto women. How can a woman be saying that? Know your ways to that which destroyed the kings. And she began to talk and talk and talk. Then she went to verse 10. The kind of woman that she will want her son to marry. And as I'm looking at the desire of a mother-in-law, I realize that it is not a bad desire. It is a desire that if you understand that it's coming from God, you know why I'm so excited about it? Now, the Word of God, the Bible, had included that chapter. And it has been regarded as an inspired scripture. Do you understand that now? Which means it must be very critical in the heart of God. That he has now included it in the holy scriptures. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far more, far above rubies. 
Now, but I'm not going to be describing how she's far above rubies. This is not the time to talk about that. But I want you to see what a husband needs that will set him set him ablaze for you. And what if you pursue everybody around you or your brother's uh, I mean your husband's mother or father or brothers or anything they will have released him to you because you know in their heart they will have known that he is not lost rather we have gained the two of them hallelujah now what is it look at verse 10 I mean verse 11 are you with me please look at verse 11 the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil uh, okay can you provide some microphone I want someone to help me read that version if you carry NIV NIV verse 11 who is having NIV verse 11 eh? a husband has full confidence in her is that all? And lacks nothing of value. Is there a, a good news in the, in, the, in the congregation? Good news. I have good news here. Good news here. Yes. Her husband puts his confidence in her. And he will never be poor. Is there any other version? Living Bible. I will read King James here. Living Bible. Her husband can trust her and she will richly satisfy his needs. Her husband can trust her because he, she will richly satisfy his need. Thank you very much. Now, I want you to know something about a man. Which is very critical to him. You may not know. What is it that is bothering every husband? And it is in their heart. So that's why that verse says, The heart of her husband does do what? Safely. You see the word safely. Trust in her. And he has no need of spoil. One of the things that bothers every man is can I safely? Is it safe to put all my confidence in this woman please listen to me is it safe will I not suffer spoil will something not go bad if I should release my total confidence in this woman Men are very, very concerned about the safety are you hearing me? Of their trust. And they are very concerned about something concerning them not getting what? Spoiled. He doesn't want anything to spoil. So, and many of you, you have not understood why. Despite that, you love your husband. You've done all that you know how to do. 
your husband is even a Christian. But have you ever been surprised that he is very, very stingy, not in terms of giving money, is very, very careful in telling you the very, very secret depth of the things in his heart. How many of you have discovered that when you thought your husband has told you everything in his heart, you only woke up to discover that there is something he did not mention? Eh? You only discover that he just paraphrased some certain things and he has kept something else. And in your own understanding, you are saying, ah, why is he not telling me everything? It's because he is concerned about spoil. He is concerned about trust. And because many times, a man is not sure that the wife has capacity to store things. Oh, am I speaking clearly to you? So he is very judicious. I use the word judicious to make it polite. He is very judicious in what he releases. That's why your husband may start telling a story. Are you hearing me? As he's telling a story, he's watching you. He's watching your reaction. He's watching how jittery you are becoming. Then when he notices that if I go further than this, it may not be safe. Do you know what he does? Do you know what he does? <coughs> Give me water there. By the time you have gone to bring water, he has changed the subject. You may be saying, the thing you are saying you have not finished. He said, uh, well, uh, that is how it is. Oh, you are not understanding. Are you understanding? Now, I don't first want you to think that he is dubious. It is not that he is dubious. He is seeking a virtue in his woman that can give him confidence that if I should pour all about me, into this woman no damage and what are the things that destroys that growing trust I must inform you that it is not the first day you saw him that he will release all Are you hearing me at all? You will discover that his release is progressive but gradual. And the parameter for it is your own growth of capacity to handle shocks and to keep salient truths and to manage information so that it does not suffer damage. So can I show you something? If your husband began to open his life to you, we can
cannot say that there will be no quarrel because in between the tongue and the teeth sometimes they quarrel <laughs> but what matters to your husband is when there is a quarrel how in the midst of your emotion you reach out to what he has delicately convey to you in confidence and you brought it out as a matter of a uh, reaction and many of you you do that He will not say you should not know what you have known. But you are not going to know anymore. So your husband becomes technically vague. How many husbands? You know I'm talking to you about tips into their hearts. Are you hearing me? If they are the one I'm talking to now. I am telling them. And both of them were naked. The man and his wife. And they were not ashamed. I am demanding husbands to be completely naked. But you know what they are saying to him? They say, Brother we know that is the Bible. But women cannot keep somebody's nakedness. Do you know that some of you are sitting here? That you have never seen the pay packet of your husband. Eh? He will demand. But when you say, What of yours? He said, Well, he will look for something and jump over it. Do you know why? The last time you saw how much money he had, you know what you did? You planned it out. So when you were demanding for something, he said, Well, we can't do that. I said, What can we not do? At least we have uh, so much money in the bank. Ah! Your boss said, Ah, in Kashi. Mm, I made a mistake. From that day forward, everything is. Well, we have about. Uh, maybe we may have about 100,000 somewhere, but I'm not very sure. It's because. Not that he wants to hide from you. It's because his heart has not convinced him that it is safe. Oh, man is complicated, you would like to say. He is checking, is it safe to let her into all of this? Because one day, when salt will be too much in the soup, and I will say, Kai, why did you put too much salt in this soup? She may wake up and begin to release what we have said in confidence. And you know, as a woman, that is your weakness. Your weakness is such that even when you are trying to scold a child, you don't know the limit of your speaking. You will quickly go into privileged information, thinking that you are using it to rebuke a child. And you will not know that your husband says, So that's how she will say it. Finished. 
So the first matter that a husband is looking for another for him to relax. In order for you to get him. In order for you to know all about him. And in order for him to let you into all that he has and all that he holds is his is, is meticulous concern whether it is safe. So let me ask you, is it safe for your husband to trust you? Do you think it is safe for him to release all into your hand? Will it not be a discussion between two friends? The day you get annoyed, will it not be the day you will open like you open a tap and everything will just come as and your husband will say, he do now, he do now. You say, no, you know, do. I must tell you what is in my heart. And I don't pretend about anything. I don't pretend. I tell people what is in my heart. I cannot keep anything. Ah. You are the one who calls it pretense. Your husband is calling it safety. That's why you can stay with a husband. Some of them that are not yet dealt with properly in the word of God and in discipleship. <laughs> you don't understand. The house where you are sitting, he has mortgaged it to take a loan that you don't know anything about. He is managing all of those affairs in his heart. You don't know about it. It's the day when auctioneers come that some wife suddenly discovered that their house has been mortgaged 10 years ago. You say, my husband, why did you do this? He said, it is not safe to tell you. Do you think I am defending dubious men? Mm -mm. I only want you to know what is paramount in the consideration of a man before he can trust you with all of himself. And yet I know the greatest desire in the heart of every woman is to have a husband that is totally, completely transparent are you hearing me but what the husband is looking at is it safe is it safe to tell her all this is it safe to say to her look my business is in a very critical condition and we need to take a loan and they told me that if I take this loan this week and I invest it in this business in another one year, I'm going to make it. But he is not sure that it is safe for him to inform you and say, I have given them the sea of hope of this, of this uh, house as a collateral. You know number one, he may come back home tomorrow and find you say, Ajigbe hmm, hmm, hmm. ah! Can somebody put Bese on his neck and begin to, to dangle about? You know Bese means death.
He comes home and says, Madam, what did he say? Mm -hmm. One day they will chase us out of this house. In the middle of the night, when you are supposed to sleep, you wake up and say, hmm. Oh my God. Even the only house we have. Chai! Hmm. You see, as your husband is seeing all those kind of reactions, he is concluding in himself, it is not safe to release everything to this woman. You may come home one day and you find that you and your daughter, you are talking so deeply. And he is not relaxed. Because he doesn't know what you are saying. He says, what do you do talk now? He said, I can't I talk with my daughter. He said, what are you telling her? It's because he is not sure that it is safe to repose confidence in you. You may be saying, he doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust me. No. Trust is end. You hear me? Trust is something you end. It is not imposed. It is as you continue to convince him, not by mouth, but by action, that he will continue to feel more relaxed, to entrust you with everything, because he knows that you will, you will, that it is safe. So, a husband needs a rested and a trusting heart. It is the cry of every husband. And that is why you find that many, many of your husbands, we've been teaching, I've been instructing husbands when I have opportunity to inform them, look, no friend must be closer to you than your wife. But many of you know in experience that there is a friend eh? that it will take prayer. Serious prayer. For you to to push him down. He's a friend that 12 midnight in the middle of the night when you and your husband are chatting if he phones that's the end of your discussion there's a friend that he will tell everything and when you are coming in they smile they say madam says no women talk we know that that is not the biblical way. But I'm dealing with what is it that makes it to be difficult for men to be biblical in their marriages. It is this matter of safety. Is it safe? So you discover that there are some men who are very close to your husband as friends. And they surprise you that the thing that your husband is only you, something you just bump at himself and his friend, they have been working on it for several days. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Do you know how even pastors and preachers? Many times it is on the pulpit. You will suddenly hear them speaking of their plans as a wife. And you say, ah, 
That thing, and you didn't tell me that oh, we didn't have time to discuss it. But you are discussing with the other brother. The issue is, is it safe? Many times, husbands, they are concerned about the safety of their trust in your hand. Whether you will know how to handle it and how not to use the information they have released to you to hinder their progress. So you hear some husbands say, if I had told you, I know you will not let me do it. That's why I decided to do it first before I come to do what? Inform you. That's not the right order. But his matter is, is it safe? So wives, in order to get your husband and to win him and to grow together and to build a relationship that nobody can easily penetrate through, you must also be growing in trustworthiness. What did I say you must be growing in? In trustworthiness. Ability to store and to process privileged information and to lock it and never to release it carelessly or casually. Do you understand? And do you know women? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know? Can I tell you a, a secret? Do you know that as you are here, sisters, do you know that women prefer to confide in brothers, in men, than in fellow sisters? Why? Tell me now, why? Because you yourself know that the weakness of a woman is that what you thought you have kept with her can be easily released casually somewhere in the name of prayer. 